Hey guys, Brandon over at LS4 King doing another new product video today. Talking about some services we offer. And this video is going to revolve around the Cadillac LC3 Supercharger. Now you're probably wondering what that has to do with an LS guy. Well, that's because we are now the sole distributor for the Fabworks LC3 Supercharger adapters for Cathedral Port LS cylinder heads. You know, now I, I did say at the start of the video, this is a new product. The fact of the matter is these have actually been out for a little while now. We do have some additional components and we have a couple things in engineering that are going to be coming out to complement these superchargers and hopefully make this swap a little bit more popular and more versatile. So let's start with the OEM supercharger assembly that was found on the Cadillac XLRV and STSV models with the LC3 4.4 V8. This is an M122 supercharger. It features an intercooled lid. It has an electronic throttle body, a boost bypass valve, and a seven rib pulley setup. The supercharger is inverted. Here we have one with the lid off that's already been mounted onto a cathedral port engine. So air is drawn in here through the throttle body. When the boost bypass valve is closed during normal operation, air gets compressed here in the rotor pack and blows vertically into the intercooled lid. Actually, I have a lid right over here for you to check out. Now, the lid does feature an air-to-water style core. These are laminar tubes. There's four of them in the lid. The air blows up through these, uh, through these cores. You can see here, they just have very fine fins. The air passes through these and the water takes some of the heat out of them. This is a dual pass configuration. Coolant enters, passes through the lid, recirculates as the back half of it is capped, and then comes back out through the front. That's how the factory plumbing is. Now, the intercooler works pretty well. It's not the most efficient design, it does add quite a bit of height to the top of the blower, something we'll talk about a little bit more, but I wanted you to have a good understanding of the functionality of it, what the lid does, what the intercooler looks like. Now, this supercharger is, you know, a pretty stout little unit. It's an M122. It's similar to what's found on the GT500 Mustangs. It's been proven to make good power on V8 applications. And when paired with these beautiful adapters, airflow second to none i mean i really got to give it to fabworks these adapters are phenomenal look at the detail that's gone into these look at the transition to the cathedral port i mean these things are gorgeous i almost feel bad that they get hidden under the blower you know they definitely um are not the cheapest product in the world, but that's why I really wanted you to see these in video because you can understand the amount of time and engineering that went into making this product. I mean, these are absolutely phenomenal adapters. Now, out of the box, they are intended to locate the M122 at truck accessory spacing. So truck accessory or late F body, um, you know, fifth, sixth gen F body stuff, this will line up perfectly with that belt routing. So if you have a vehicle with ample hood clearance, because this is slightly taller than a truck intake, you're running cathedral ports, so you can have the adapters, and you have plenty of room for a wide accessory drive, this is a great affordable option as an alternative to the ASAs to get a supercharger onto your LS and making some steam. Now, watching this video, you're probably wondering, what does that have to do with the LS4 guys? Well, we actually have one of these blowers running. Um, my good friend Thomas has one on his Chevy Impala. We helped him with the snout shortening service. He was working with a shop local to him that helped him out with the accessory drive. They did some things uh, a little differently than how I intend to do it in the future. But I mean, all in all, they got it on, running on an LS 
front wheel drive of all things, and it's making pretty good power. So what does it take to put this blower onto a front wheel drive LS4? Start at the snout. So in order to make this line up with our accessories, we have to remove three inches from this very, very long snout. By doing so, we lose some of the mounting brackets for the boost bypass valve, which isn't a big deal. The boost bypass valve is cable operated. It runs under the supercharger. So relocating this isn't a big deal. One service we're excited to offer now that we've done it a couple times is our snout shortening service. In order to get this to work on an LS4, we had to remove three inches, maintain all the correct bearing pockets and shorten this, the snout shaft. And I'll show you how we do that. We have a, a little adapter here that's a very light fit, um, very light press fit. I mean, you, you saw how easy I got that off of there. And we have four holes for plug welding it. So once we drop it onto the shaft, I'm not gonna be able to get it on right now. Um, one hand holding the camera. <laughs> the sleeve drops over the machined shaft where we've made our modifications. The shortened hub that the pulley rides on slides in on top. This locates us, we perimeter weld and we plug weld. You now have a shortened shaft assembly. We press the pulley back on, reassemble with all new bearings into an OEM machine snout. And now you have an assembly that will fit LS4 accessories. Now, I will say it's not as simple as just putting a shortened snout, bolting the blower with the adapters on and running. Unfortunately, as you all know, LS4s have a variety of clearance issues. Power steering pump needs to go. Run my power steering delete pulley. Um, that will give you ample clearance. Get rid of the tab for the power steering reservoir. If you want to go this far, you will need to consider going to electric power steering. You cannot keep the mechanical pump with this setup. And then we have the issue of the alternator mount because the alternator hits the billet fuel rails that you know protrude pretty far. So it is still not cut and dry, but it can be done if you are mechanically inclined and you've got some fabrication aptitude. Um, I myself am working on a couple components to make that blower fit the LS4 without any modification. We're still a little ways out, but I wanted to show you some of the things we have in the works to make these adapters work for front wheel drive applications. You know, obviously you've got a good understanding of what it takes to bolt this onto a truck motor or something using truck accessories and get the blower on up and running, right? So in addition to the adapters, what other things do we have to help you out with the swap? Well, we've got billet fuel rails now. These things are so trick. I really like the way he did these. Uh, they have little extension hats that bolt on to the main body of the rail. The rail's machined for Dash 8 ORB fittings. We ship these with four dash eight fittings. So if you want to do a true dynamic pass through style, you can. We also include two ORB plugs if you're going to deadhead the rails. But I mean, these are really, really, really nice. Um, they are oriented left and right. I got lucky that time. They use existing bosses and the mounting hardware we supply. And then they get you down to a beautiful height to use truck style injectors. If you want to run like an LS3, like a really, really short injector and keep the rail down, you can. The mounting bosses do not pass through any fluid passages. So you could unbolt these, put a spacer here and just use some longer hardware. And that will also accommodate the ultra short LS3 rails, uh, I'm sorry, injectors rather, in the event that you need that extra clearance. But the way they sit, the way they ship, they are intended for, um, you know, truck injectors. So fuel rails, it's another new product that has come from Fabworks to work in conjunction with the billet adapters. Aside from that, the biggest thing everybody wants to know is how tall is it? How tall is it? Taller than a truck intake. It's definitely tall. And you can see that intercooled lid definitely adds some significant height to this unit. One thing we are working on is a non-intercooled lid. Now, before you jump down my throat and say that's a horrible idea, hear me out. 
if, you know, this is a prototype piece, so it's steel. If we move forward with this, we offer you guys a half inch aluminum flange that has a one inch lid overall height. We have plenty of room for the supercharger to do its job, compress that air in the cover. Yes, it's not intercooled. Yes, it's a hot air combo. But what we would like to see is integrating a meth injection kit with a couple nozzles that spray post supercharger directly into the runners. That would allow us to kind of bypass the intercooler, have the cooling effects of the meth injection, using it as a supplemental fuel as well for some applications. If you guys are really hanging this thing out, um, you know, you don't have to worry about meth contaminating the coders and getting the Teflon coating off of them since we're spraying it post supercharger. And we would now be able to offer a significantly lower combination that you could fit under most stock hoods. Uh, what I really like about that is the simplicity of eliminating heat exchanger, ice tank, all the coolant hoses, a water pump, maintaining it that it's running correctly at all times. You know, this would really simplify things. Just doing a flat lid, no intercooler, couple meth nozzles, and a simple bolt-on kit with a progressive controller like uh, what Alki Control offers and several other companies. I personally think that that would be a great option for you guys, and it's something we're going to have on the website pretty soon. I just want to personally test it and make sure I'm not sticking my foot in my mouth and that we can achieve adequate cooling um, without going to the giant air-to-water setup. You know, the other issue is these cores, they're really cool. It was a good idea at the time. There's a reason we haven't really seen them in circulation again in any other applications because it's definitely not the most efficient system. I would argue that by removing this intercooler, going to a non-intercooled lid and running the meth injection kit in conjunction with like E85, you would have a really efficient setup that would make more boost than the factory intercooled lid because you no longer have to force air through this core. So any pressure drop that you saw as a result of using the intercooler would be alleviated. It's a theory. I haven't put it to work yet, but we're working on it. Um, and I'm excited to share those results with you guys when we get there. But I wanted to let you know that I am now uh, the distributor for the Fabworks products. This is all up on the website. It's all available for purchase right now and in individual components. We're also going to be adding a couple kits that include brand new GM NOS superchargers. And the snout shortening service will be up on the website as well. Currently only offering it for my LS4 guys. But if you've got a fourth gen F body, GTO, maybe even a Corvette uh, accessory drive for your swap, and you would like a snout shortened, email me, brandon at ls4king.com. And we can discuss it and see if I can make something a little bit shorter that'll fit your application. But yeah, you know, it, this is a really, really cool product. I'm excited about it. You know, these superchargers are pretty affordable. They've definitely gone up in recent years. They are no longer $400 units like they were, um, you know, in 2020. Uh, they've definitely gone up. If you find one for under a thousand dollars, you're doing really good. They seem to trend at like twelve to fourteen hundred for a unit right now. But you know, our goal here is to put together a package that you can bolt on, make really good power comparable to an ASA, and hopefully save a couple bucks. ASA blowers have gone up in price as well. The components that it takes to swap those on to most uh, conversions are pretty expensive. So, you know, we're not splitting hairs, but we definitely feel that this is a more cost-effective option. Um, especially for LS4 guys, because once I have all the kinks worked out, it will be the only supercharger option. <laughs> uh, you know, to, to my knowledge, Thomas is the only guy who has successfully supercharged swapped an LS4. And, uh, you know, he did that with the help of some of our products. He's running our adapters, running my snout. And uh, we're hoping to catch up to them and offer a slightly more intuitive package for the rest of you guys. Uh, I really appreciate you tuning in and watching this. I hope you find these as amazing as I do. I just can't get over them. You know, the, uh, obviously I'm a glutton for uh, high quality stuff. And, you know, this definitely checks a lot of my boxes from a design and a machining standpoint. If you've got any questions on this stuff, don't hesitate to ask. You can email me. You can drop them to sales at ls4king.com or leave them in the comments. We do read them. Uh, all I ask is 
if you're going to ask a question please don't be generic have it be specific so we can cut down on some back and forth and i can get you the right answer the first time uh hope you guys are as excited about this as i am and check back for more updates regularly thanks for watching